So apparently there's a show airing this season about a time-traveling teddy bear that's trying to prevent robots from killing humanity in the future by contracting an AI idol to carry out specific missions throughout the span of 100 years, and I've barely heard anyone talk about it. No, seriously, I know this season isn't as great as Winter 2021 was, but come on, there are definitely some really good shows airing right now. And Vivi, Fluorite Eyes Song is definitely one of them. It's an anime original by Studio Wit, who's famous for their work on Attack on Titan seasons 1 through 3 and Vinland Saga, and it's filled with all the sci-fi elements I could have asked for in a show and more. The show is set in the future, where AIs have gotten so advanced to the point that they've become perfectly integrated within human society. At the beginning of the series, they're at the peak of advancement and have begun to rebel against humans, and the show starts off with the desperate professor sending back an AI a hundred years back in the time before brutally getting murdered by rebelling robots who are seemingly going around killing all humans without hesitation. This AI named Matsumoto, which is the name of the scientist, was sent back to contact one specific AI in mind, the first autonomous AI who was named Diva, who later turns into Vivi, and then back to Diva, and uh, well, it's complicated. The basic premise of how AIs function in this world is that they're given a mission, and they must do whatever they need to in order to complete their mission. Whether it be to nurse people back to health and make them happy, or teach humans how to play the piano, these AIs act accordingly and take any measures that they must for the sake of humanity. Diva's own mission is to sing from her heart, as she's an idol that's stationed in a fictitious amusement park named Neoland, and her ultimate goal is to reach the main stage so her voice could reach as many people as possible. Now, how does a robot robot idol with such a simple mission turn into a spaceship saving, island destroying badass. This is where Matsumoto comes in. He makes his debut in the form of a cube and basically does the oh I'm from the future and I chose you to help me save the world from going to shit type of speech you see in every single time traveling series, although he puts his own spin on it. He convinces her by helping him stop AIs from destroying humanity so she can complete her own mission, as she needs humanity to exist in the first place in order for her voice to be heard by everyone. He does this whole speech after transferring into a teddy bear which makes it all the more hilarious. This is where we begin to see how AIs can be manipulated in order to complete a mission and even if they have a basic mission programmed into them, they're still capable of doing literally anything if it's somehow justifiable for them when it comes to contributing towards their mission. After convincing Diva to help him save the future, Matsumoto goes over major events that occurred in the 100 years that led up to humanity being purged by robots. He tells Diva how they occurred and how he's going to help her stop them and what he and she should do in order to complete specific missions. Since he's an AI from the future, he's far more advanced than anything present in Diva's current timeline and that comes in very handy when it comes to completing missions. The missions vary quite a bit throughout the story and it goes from something small like saving a politician that was lobbying for a law to destroying an island to halt AI advancement. Diva handles these missions in various ways and she often ignores Matsumoto's orders in order to do what she thinks is right and is for the sake of her mission. Even though she's a robot, Diva still has a very distinct personality and some kind of moral compass that makes her go for what people would usually see as right. She has an innocent way of thinking at the beginning of the series and always tries to save people even if it puts the plan in danger and sacrifices efficiency. Despite this, the plans laid out by Matsumoto end up being far more exciting as Diva throws a wrench in them to do her own type of thing. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I really like how even though a desired end result is usually achieved by each of these missions, there's always something tragic that happens right afterwards or someone is sacrificed to reach this result. Through this, we get to see Diva grow as she witnesses these tragedies and watch her experience true loss despite being a robot that shouldn't really feel these kinds of emotions. We get to see how she goes from Diva, a robot whose mission it is to sing her heart out, to Vivi, the first autonomous AI whose mission it is to save humanity from being overrun by AI. These dual identities come into play as the series progresses, but discussing how would be pretty spoilery so I won't touch on it that much, just know that it's done superbly. Another aspect of the show I find to be very interesting is the advancement of AI themselves. Diva develops quite a bit throughout the story, which is expected, but I'm talking about how AI as a whole improved throughout the story. We get to see this improvement at a very rapid pace due to how Matsumoto appears in the story, which in my opinion is done very cleverly. He usually shows up every X amount of years, whether it be 10 or 40 years, tells Diva, who usually changed by quite a bit in terms of attitude and advancement, and then fucks off to god knows where until the next major conflict for their mission pops up. Due to these large gaps of time in between missions, we get to see how human society's attitude towards AI changes, and how they go from treating them like basic tools to literally marrying them and forming very very strong and personal bonds with them. We also see AI become more and more like humans as well, and some humans becoming more and more like AI. We see how more and more people either become fond of AIs or come to fear them, such as the main villains of the show, an anti-AI group named Toak. That's a, that's a funny name. Toak. Twack. Uh, I mean, anyways, I'm not gonna go too deep into them. They're they're an anti-AI group. They just they don't they don't fucking like the robots, right? I, I don't know what else to tell you. They kind of suck at their job too, cause like in the original timeline, their efforts ended up in the exact opposite of what they even wanted in the first place. So that's that. Uh, Kakitani's there though. He's he's pretty cool. 
He's pretty cool. I'll give him that. Now, onto one of the main attractions of the show, the fights. Holy shit. They are so, so, so good. Like, oh my goodness. The choreography and camera work is perfect. The animation and art are jaw-dropping, and the fights themselves are done in an extremely creative manner due to there being limitless possibilities due to how versatile AIs become and how advanced Masamoto is in the first place. Animators like Shunsuke Aoki and Masahiro Tokumaru flex their combat prowess when it comes to VVs, and it's truly a feast for the eyes. Another amazing aspect of the show is the music. After all, shouldn't a show with an MC that's an idol have amazing music? Yes. Yes, it should. And VVs definitely does. The opening and endings are both bops, and I really like how the opening changes throughout the series while keeping the same song. The soundtrack itself is wonderful, from soothing upbeat tracks like a tender moon tempo that feature beautiful vocals and piano, to the epic orchestra track that was playing during the Elizabeth vs. Vivi fight. Also, did I mention that this show was written by the same genius who's behind ReZero, Tappei Nagatsuki? He did a phenomenal job with the story with Vivi's as well, and his characterization with Vivi herself is phenomenal. You can tell that it's written by the same guy who wrote ReZero because it starts off pretty simple but gets very complicated complicated and confusing very quickly. However, once you take a step back and pay full attention to what's going on, you start understanding how damn brilliant the story is, especially with how timelines are handled, just like in ReZero. So yeah, those are my thoughts on VVs. If you like action, go watch VVs. If you like a captivating sci-fi story about AI advancing and becoming a threat over time, go watch VVs. If you like watching a robot who was once emotionless but sort of discovers her humanity over time, go watch VVs. If you like fantastic soundtrack, go watch VVs. And if you like all of the above, then you're in for a treat, my friend. Anyways, have a good day, y'all.